We've run aground. There's ground right there, everywhere. But there's one area of the ICW that we're gonna have to pass. It's a well-known shoaling area. So a good Samaritan, Andrew from the sailboat that was behind us all day, came to the beach in his dinghy and said, are you in the trawler? Your boat's moved back a thousand yards and still moving. It's our last day in Charleston and we're gonna show you a fantastic morning. Every good morning starts with a cup of coffee, so let's get one from Second State. I low key wish today was a work day because that coffee shop was really cool and uh, probably would be a good place to sit and work for half a day or something. And that we have our lattes, let's head for breakfast. To go with our coffee, we are getting some biscuits from Callie's Biscuits at Market Street. And the last part for a fantastic morning in Charleston is enjoying your hot biscuits with a coffee in one of the many parks here. So we are in Colonial Lake Park and we are going to sit at the Darius Rucker's Mom's Memorial Bench and enjoy our biscuits. <laughs> and listen to the birds. There's a lot of people exercising. It's a beautiful morning. Oh, come here. Now it's time for us to head back to the boat because we have a big day ahead of us. Now unfortunately high tide is pretty early nowadays. So it's just after high tide now. So we're gonna try to leave fast. We do have a few boat jobs to do before we go. But there's one area of the ICW that we're gonna have to pass that's a well-known shoaling area, so we're trying to leave in time for that. But we're gonna have a relatively short day on the boat today, heading up to Bulls Island. Ready first, mate? Ready. You can do the bow line now. Please proceed first, mate. Okay. Bow line is on the boat. Okay. See how we're not really moving at all right now? Well, like a little bit. Yeah, but this one's pretty taut. Uh, I guess so. But you can just hop on from right there, too. I'm pushing the bow with the stern. All right. You just tell me how my stern looks. Stern is okay so far. Am I clear? So far, yes. Am I clear that I can turn? Yes, I think so. Okay. All right, we're good. We're off. So 
that right there was Fort Sumter, which was uh, an important fort in the Civil War. And used to be accessible by private boat, but I think it was two years ago they stopped that policy because it was basically being abused in the way that there was a beach that kind of surfaced over the years and that became a big party spot. So a lot of trash, a lot of littering. And, uh, the park officials, while they, while they didn't own the beach, they owned the dock to the beach. And so they ended up just nixing the whole thing. Um, and so now the only way to get there is by a ferry, but um, we, might, we might do that next time. It's pretty cool. wonderful visit that we had and we can't wait to come back. Now for lunch today we have smoothies to help us detox from all of the uh, very delicious southern food we indulged in this past weekend. So from that bridge right there to the next bridge, it's been reported that there's quite a bit of shoaling as part of the ICW. However, when we were talking to Fletcher at the marina in Charleston, he said that this part of the ICW has been recently dredged. So it looks like we have nine and a half feet right now and it's uh, falling tide, more than halfway uh, to low tide. So I think we might be fine, but we're gonna pay attention. We've got traffic. <laughs> we have been reading along the Great Loop Experience book pretty, uh, pretty closely, so that way um, it can kind of give us these hint helpful tips, like the one that we received for this part or this section of the ICW, where there's extreme shoaling, and we are seeing it, and it's like. It's a lowering tide, but it's not yet low tide, and it is just a very, very narrow channel.
hopeful that my dancing will help relieve some of my stress as we're going in areas of six, and six feet of water, but sometimes it's like four feet. And the channel does not seem to be very deep here at all, so it's a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. We've run aground. Dun, dun, dun. Can I turn off? Yeah. So it's low tide here and we were trying to come into our anchorage for the evening, but uh, yeah, I was on a work call, Jen was driving and we, Jen kept us in the channel and didn't turn away, didn't turn like doing the first turn in. And so we kind of went, I took over, I took her in and we're trying to come back around over here to the other side, cause this is like a shoal right here in the middle. And we ran aground. So, yeah. So it's low tide, so we have about six feet of water that's gonna come up and push us up um, eventually. High tide's at 8.30 tonight. So we're just gonna take it easy here for maybe, what, three hours should give us enough uh, height. So, you know, four hours, yeah, three or four hours. So it's what, two, it's three right now, so six tonight. We should be able to move. And if not, we have to call a towboat US. So, not exactly the plan, huh? So I'm able to take our boat hook and uh, feel down. And there's ground everywhere, ground. So, just in case. Uh, we didn't believe the fact that we were stuck or the GPS. We are really there's ground right there, everywhere. Okay, so uh, when we first ran aground, Wait, I was. We should go in the channel. No, we're going back. So uh, I just almost ran aground again. Um, but so I was kind of upset when we ran aground, just not because of anything, just because it was not very, not very good situation. Well, anyway, I made a cup of coffee, worked for a few minutes. Actually, I was gonna hop in the water and go for a swim. When I did that, Jen was like, uh, wait, the boat's moving. I'm like, what, the boat's moving? How is it moving? Cause it's only 3.45. It's only been 45 minutes. Uh, but anyway, we're moving, so time to move. We're gonna try to go to our uh, anchorage and not get stuck this time. So we're going around the back where that other sailboat went uh, right behind us. So, you know. Yeah, this area like just really scared me. I think we're just having a grand old time. Yeah. Oh, there's fire in the tail. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> ah, I don't think Well, we found our anchorage. We we're kind of concerned because when we set our anchor, it didn't like yank. And normally it yanks if it's set. What are you doing? Okay, the ice cream. Since it's been such a long day, we are having ice cream cones. Because now, now our electrical is tripping. Yeah, now all of our electrical sockets are tripping, which is the first. So. So it's I don't time know. for ice cream. It's been a day. Yeah. It's been a couple days and one. So anyway, we're like not really ready to unwind yet because we want to make sure we're not going to drag into the shore. But you know, it is what it is. We need to take Ollie out too. Oh yeah, we need to do that too later today. We have Ina Garten on board? Yeah. I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> Cheers. Springtime carbonara. And a great view tonight. Yeah, look at that. 
You can see the ocean. You can see the ocean. It is after dinner and we are, we put the dinghy down in the water and we are taking Ollie to shore for her to um, do her business, but then also for us to get out and stretch our legs. When we were putting the dinghy in the, in the water, the handle for the, uh, the engine fell in the water and there's a super strong current. So it went way down there. Freaking frack. Frickin frack. Frickin' frack today. I'll tell you one thing, you're a lot faster going in that direction than you were going in this direction. But just look at, I mean, the reviews of it are, uh, are, are all good. Okay, I'll read this. You need to anchor mid-channel where the creek branches out for swing. Mid-channel where the creek branches out. So let's just try that. Hey, at least we weren't around any other boats. We weren't around other boats. But we were around okay. a boat, though, that told us that we were dragging. Yeah, I mean, in all situations, we kind of had it the best. 
we're on reading this, be very mindful that this is at a much higher tide than normal. You know what I mean? I guess so. What I'm saying is that normally these grasses would not be this flooded. Yeah. I'm, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Does that make sense? Yeah, look, I can barely even see that. Yeah. If it sets, we'll try to set it. If it doesn't set, we're gonna go all the way out to the main part where that was all muddy. Yeah, I think we probably should have trusted your intuition when you said, I don't think it's set next time. Yeah, like I'm not, we're not even moving the boat and it's moving three knots. Crazy. Well, that is what it said here. It said three to four knots at tide change. Honestly, I'm not comfortable with this spot. I don't like it. I'm just telling you. You I'm don't want it? Do you not want to try the anchor to see if it sets I mean, or no? Like the current is just so strong, I don't feel comfortable at all. Okay. I want to go some. I want to go over there or somewhere where I know it's mud. Okay. Because I just feel that we are being pulled back at such a strong pace. Yeah, I mean, it's very. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so new plan. We're going out to the intercoastal from this creek that led to the ocean and we're gonna hopefully anchor in mud because when the anchor came up it was a lot of, a lot of grass so that didn't our anchor didn't hold and we were honestly when we set it I was like I didn't feel a hold but we waited a few hours or a couple hours on the boat with the alarm and it, and it didn't move but I think just right as we left the boat the tides got crazy and that's when the boat started moving but thanks to Andrew at SV Ecola. So the new plan is we're going out to the intercoastal where we have mud, hopefully better holding, and also less tide. It's going to be alright. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We're going to do this. Tide, because I just got 5 feet on it. Okay. So right before high tide is a rising tide. Well, our day started off pretty Excellent. fantastic in Charleston. Biscuits and coffee. But quickly went to shit. <laughs> we, of course, you saw us run aground, but everything after that was kind of a daze. We, we hightailed it back to the boat. We ended up trying three more anchorages, um, trying to get our anchor to set all for it to fail and whenever we brought up our anchor the first time whenever it had dragged there was a ton of grasses caught on the anchor so we just kind of knew that it, there was not a ton of like mud and like sand for it to grab into and hold yeah, into and dig into yeah. right so whenever we so where we are now is right on the side of the channel it's actually in this weird spot of where we ran aground earlier in the day <laughs> yeah um basically hey, because you can't drag anchor if you're touching the ground so that's actually half the thought really i mean um, and then also the other thought was that when we pulled up the anchor then there was a little bit of like sand and like mud on it So at least we knew that, that what the bottom was like here. Yeah, and so the Our only downside here is we're right next to the channel So we've yeah. already had two boats like zoom by us here. We have our anchor light on but you know, it's gonna be a rough night tonight Yeah, and um yeah, and on top of that, Elliot has work to do because today was a very very hectic day um, and I think we'll be taking, once Elliot goes to bed, he'll probably set an alarm for me to wake up and check on the boat and the tides and 
look at how things are going. So mm -hmm. the plan is to leave tomorrow really early because that coincides with high tide and we need to get out of right next to the channel. Yeah. So and right now we are at six feet of water and it is high tide. So we probably will and high be... tide is six, six, six feet. Yeah. So we need high tide tomorrow. All right. See you tomorrow. Signing off. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> this is a warning from the past. So we are in. What park are we in? You're a colonial lake. Okay. Oh, did you get all the crumbs? Oops. Sorry, Ollie. Did you just whack her? Yeah. Intentionally. Aren't you driving? Nope. You're cruising. You're navigating. More than halfway fall. More than halfway fall. Fall. Fallen. Fallen. The trimaran is like kind of strange to me. No. What if anybody's made a quattro man trimaran? What? I don't know. They, they sell quattro.